Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to the Piper Report. So I'm going to take a political compass test right here, and you can take it with me. And let's see where I line up on the political spectrum. Um, I know there's a bunch of different tests like these. Um, I was watching a video of Coffee with Comment. He was doing one, too. And for those who don't know, Coffee with Comment is has a really good channel. He has really good video editing. I highly recommend subscribing to him if you haven't already. I mean, he should definitely have more than 500 subs, but anyways, I just gave him a shout out and he probably won't know about it, but hey, that's fine. But yeah, check him out. Anyways, I saw him doing one and I remembered I took one of these a while back, so I want to do it again. So here, let's do it. Page one of six. If economic globalization is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations. Yes, I'd agree with that. I don't know about strongly agree, but definitely agree with that. I mean, a lot of times these are contingent upon each other. You know, you don't hear this often. Corporations do help people. I mean, look at Apple. Where would people be without Apple? How many people have iPhones, iPods, all these things? So, agree. I'd always support my country, whether it's right or wrong. Um, that's I disagree with that. I mean, you should support your country, but if your country all of a sudden devolves and it starts adopting communist ideologies or fascist ideologies, you should protest it. You have the right to protest it. No one chooses his or her country of birth, so it's foolish to be proud of it. Uh... No. Our race has many superior qualities compared with other races. Okay. <sighs> this is kind of a tough question because in a couple of ways to look at this. I mean, you read this, you're like, wow, this is racist. I mean, if you say agree or strongly agree, you're a fascist. But, I mean, if you actually look at different races, Asians are actually more intelligent on average. Um than other races african americans are actually physically stronger or more endurance they're better athletes than others it's just i mean there's different ways to look at this without really being racist so i'll just say um disagree i guess the enemy of my enemy is my friend strongly disagree this is what's happening in the middle east we don't like assad so what are we doing we're funding the rebels that are fighting Assad, and these rebels turn out to be a sect of ISIS who are then going to attack us. Horrible, horrible foreign policy if we do that. Military action that defies international law is sometimes justified. Um, I, I guess I don't know much about, that much about international law to really accurately answer this. I mean, for instance, if there is a dictator who is killing oh no I'll do disagree we should follow the law there is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment strongly agree with that we have Hollywood celebrities trying to dictate what is morally right and wrong page two now the economy we're talking attitudes here not the FTSE index people are ultimately divided more by class than by nationality um, are they asking me, like, is that how I feel, or is that what I perceive, or is that how it should be? It's kind of a hard question. I'll come back to that. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. I strongly agree, and the reason why is because inflation is a tax. The higher the inflation, the more you value, value, dollar devalues, and the worse it is for the economy. Because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulation. Uh, disagree. We should have free market. I mean, there might need to be some regulations, but you can trust some corporations. From each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. From each according to his ability to each according to his need. Um, 
from each according to his ability to each according to his need. What does that mean? Like, from each according to his ability to each according to his need is a finally good idea. So, ugh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Agree. It's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now bottled, brand, or consumer product. I agree with that. I mean, if we had better economic system, we would have more water treatment plants. We would have more power plants, nuclear power plants, things of that nature. Land shouldn't be a commodity to be bought and sold. I disagree with that. I believe in private property. That is one of the biggest libertarian philosophies, is the idea of private property. And you should be able to do what you want with land. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to society. I agree with that. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. Um, ah, I, mean, I believe in free trade, but yes, I mean, sometimes you may have to either do a tariff or something of that. I'll, yeah, I agree. The only social responsibility of a company should be to to deliver a profit to its shareholders. Well, I mean, that's the overall goal of it, but responsibilities, you wanna make sure you have adequate working facilities and you know safety for your employees, so. The rich are too highly taxed. Um, well, I mean, we shouldn't have any really income taxes at all, so to that regard, the answer would be yes, but at the same time, since we live in the modern world and people don't want to get rid of the income tax, I mean, we don't need to cut taxes really for the rich. We could keep, if you make a million or more, like 40%. I mean, that's not bad, so um, disagree, I guess. Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. Well, uh, I guess this depends. For instance, cosmetic surgery. If you have more money, you should then have be able to afford better doctors. I mean, the free market would allow you based on your income. So I would agree with that. Um, in terms of just regular health care, I mean, if you go to the ER, you're going to be treated no matter what. It doesn't matter if you're wearing a suit or you're not wearing a shirt at all. They're going to treat you who's ever on call, so... Um, I will base this enough like cosmetic surgery, I guess, so I agree. Governments should penalize businesses that mislead the public. I would agree with that. I mean, I don't believe that governments really should have that much control over businesses, but if businesses are not following regulations or they're breaking the law, then there should be um, consequences for it. A genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies. Okay. Here is the thing about monopolies, and I really want to debate the progressive voice. I've been trying to get him to debate me for a long time because he makes these horrible, retarded statements about how classical liberals is just are idiots and libertarianism doesn't make sense, blah, blah, blah. It's just... He's really obsessed with secular talk, like biggest fanboy ever, secular talk. So I've been trying to get him to debate me. He gave me a fake email the first time, and the second time he hasn't responded to me yet. And anyways, I bring that up because one of the arguments against libertarianism is that it leads to monopolies. But here's the thing. How are monopolies created? Why do monopolies exist as they do today? The reason, simple reason is, is that there's no competition to actually adequately um, take business from them. So for instance, we'll just do Walmart, so it's simple. If a small business owner all of a sudden wanted to open up a retail store like Walmart, he would have to, first off, he'd have to pay for his income tax because small businesses have to pay individual income tax rates. So he'll, he'll have to take a loan out and it'd probably be over um, 150,000-ish, maybe 200,000. So he'll be paying the highest tax bracket of 39.6%. That, along with regulations like a minimum wage and other regulations, 
he does not have the capital to actually create a retail store and be able to lower his prices low enough so he can compete with companies like Walmart. If you got rid of the income tax and you got rid of regulations, you would have a lot more money and small business owners wouldn't have to pay the top marginal tax rate. The risk of starting a business would drop exponentially, giving more people incentive to create more businesses, to create more retail stores. Not only that, they can hire people at whatever wage they want. Whoever wants the job will get it. So that they don't got to worry about having to raise their prices to be able to make money. If they can have a small business and their biz they can lower prices because they have yeah they have more money and they don't got to do regulations. I mean, then you are competing with monopolies. And this is what happened. If this happened at the very beginning, there wouldn't be monopolies like there are today because you would see constant, constant competition and companies like Walmart and Apple wouldn't be able to control the market so this really you don't this if you want a general free market and you do like just basic founding principles this country is founded on free enterprise then you wouldn't need restrictions because there wouldn't be monopolies due to the ever expanding increase of small businesses so strongly disagree sorry i went on a little digression there but yeah the freer the market the freer the people strongly agree okay back to this one now people are ultimately divided more by class than by nationality so i don't know how to answer this like i said i don't know if they're asking do i believe this or do i per perceive this believe or perceive that's the question um i'm gonna go by perceive and Yes, especially now. Identity politics is very rampant, so I, I think they are divided more by class than nationality. Um, oh, class. I guess I'm thinking, I was thinking like race and stuff. I guess, well, class can mean anything. Maybe, Im, Im, um, maybe they mean uh, wage gaps, stuff like that. So either way, yeah, I agree. Page three. Social values. Abortion, when the woman's life is not threatened, should always be illegal. Um, okay. Me on abortion, I am pro-life, but I believe in pro-choice. I don't believe I have the right to have you do what you want. Is it murder? Well, that's a philosophical and metaphysical question I won't get into. But what is interesting, and I thought about doing an abortion video in the past, a, mon a video monologue, just kind of going over some stuff, but... The main question becomes, when is a fetus a human being? And I think a good way to look at it is this. When, when are you technically dead? Technically dead is when a doctor calls your death, time of death. And when does a doctor do that? When your heart stops. So you could say that when you die, dying means you no longer have a life force, is when your heart stops. So that regard, babies have heart rates around six weeks in pregnancy. So if you want to look at it that way, you are actually killing a heartbeat, and hence you are killing a life. Now that's one way to look at it. So another way, I mean, is that they're still cells. They don't have multi-organs yet, so they're not humans. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to look at it, but so I would disagree with that. All authority should be questioned, definitely. Transparency is key. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That is called lex talionis. That's a Latin term for that. And uh, it depends on the situation. It depends on the situation. For instance, capital murder, death penalty. If somebody tortures somebody and kills them, should they automatically get the death penalty? And many people say, yeah, they deserve it. But at the same time, they could have been falsely tried. They could have been found guilty when they're actually innocent. And if you want to look at just the total impact on society, um, death penalties cost more because when you're on death row, you have a lot more litigation, more court proceedings trying to get you off death row. So 
in terms of just overall betterment of the country, an eye for an eye, or rather Lex Talionis, in terms of death penalty, would probably be um, worse off. So I'm going to disagree with that, but I mean, I can, I can understand that mentality, and I can see it that way, too. Taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. Definitely, we don't need to subsidize the arts. Schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory. I would agree with that. Um, I mean, you should go to school, and you should want to learn, but, I mean, I was in college. I know that I hate it if I missed class, got docked. You know, like, it affected my grade. Even though if I ace the test, if I miss, like, a week of class, but I ace the test, I still got a C because I missed class. So, um, strongly disagree. All people have their rights, but it is better for all of us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. Uh, we'll come back to that. Good parents sometimes have to spank their children. Agree. It is natural for children to keep secrets from their parents. Agree. Possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Strongly agree. The prime function of schooling should be to equip the future generation to find jobs. Um, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's more than that, but I guess, yeah, I mean, you go to school to be, intel to become intelligent, to gain knowledge. And why do you gain knowledge? So you can live a comfortable life. And comfortable lives usually require jobs, so I'd agree with that. People with serious inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. The most important thing for children to learn is to accept discipline. I don't know if it's the most important thing for children to learn, but it's definitely important. Um, I mean, we could look at respect. Respect is very important, too. Just... Um, inquisition to you know the the drive to become intelligent to help yourself in life not to live off the government not to go on welfare so i guess discipline could be tied into that so agree some of these questions i don't know they're just they're kind of vague there are no savage and civilized peoples there are only different cultures disagree those who are able to work and refuse opportunities should not expect society support. Strongly agree. And this is why people, when you hear that, you're like, wow, that's a horrible thing to say. But no, it's not true. As Ron Paul said, there should always be an availability of jobs. And every person, if they're not employed, should be looking for jobs, should have to have a job. You have to create an environment for them so if they do lose their job, they can get another job. They don't just live off unemployment for a while, and then after that they go on welfare and live off that. So, when you are troubled, it's better to not think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. Okay, this has absolutely nothing to do with politics. This is like psychological depression almost, but me personally, yeah, I mean, I agree with that. First-generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country. I disagree with that. What's good for most successful corporations is always ultimately good for all of us. Um, no. No broadcasting institution, however independent its content, should receive public funding. Agree. I actually strongly agree with that. The government doesn't have to subsidize every single thing. Or where's the one I missed? This one. All people have their rights, but it's better for all of us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. I think this is like segregation, if I'm reading this correctly, so disagree with that. Page four. Sorry, it's just taking longer than I thought, but hey, I'm having fun. Hope you are too. Our civil liberties are being excessively curbed in the name of counterterrorism. Strongly agree. Patriot Act, FISA warrants, Edward Snowden, I mean, the PRISM program, all the upstream, you just, all these things. 
A significant advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all the arguments that delay progress in democratic political in a democratic political system. A single advantage of a one-party state, uh, no. Although the electronic age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. Strongly disagree. And this is why the Second Amendment and the Bill of Rights in general is imperative for a free society because power breeds corruption. The more power government has, the more corrupt you're going to see the officials become. I mean, that's one of the things that when people want a bigger government, they don't understand. You should, you should ask them three questions. Do you think the government has waste? Waste being, do you think they waste money on stuff they don't need to? And they'll probably say, yeah. The second question, do you think there are those in government who are corrupt? And they say, yeah. And the third question, do you think that power corrupts people? And they say, yeah. And then you answer, finally, knowing those three things, why would you want to give government more power? <laughs> I mean, if already they're corrupt and the more powerful they become, the more corrupt they come, and they're already wasteful, why give them more power? The death penalty should be an option for the most serious crimes. I'll be honest, I am ambivalent on the death penalty. I don't know how I feel. I mean, I agree with it. I used to agree with it, but now I'm not so sure. I don't think. I mean, life in prison is just as bad. It's just as bad, spending your life behind bars, so I have to disagree with it. I'm not sure, but I am leaning towards no death penalty. In a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. Uh, we'll come back to that. Abstract art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered art at all. What? <laughs> art is subjective. I mean, what? This has nothing to do with politics. This is philosophical. In criminal justice, Punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. Disagree. It is a waste of time to try to rehabil rehabilitate some criminals. Um, no, I mean, you should always try. You should, you should try. Some people are below, um, possibly beyond help, but you should still try. The business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. Well... Since the business person and manufacturer are creating jobs and are actually, you know, hiring people, paying wages, helping the betterment of society, whereas a writer and artist are based on just um, fun and um, material that people enjoy on a subconscious level or on a conscious level, I mean, I think it's, I think it's pretty safe to say that yes, this is far more important mothers may have careers but their first duty is to be homemakers no disagree i mean i think studies do show that mothers who remain at home with their children actually their children turn out better i mean they are less likely to go into poverty i believe there are studies like that but they shouldn't uh that shouldn't be their first duty Multinational companies are unethically exploiting the plant genetic resources of developing countries. I agree with that. There is crime and corruption and greed. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. Uh, no. Okay. In a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. I mean, you're talking about hierarchy here. And it depends on the location of the hierarchy. For instance, in terms of the military, yes, there has to be a hierarchy. There has to be. But in terms of a free market and a free society, no, there isn't. There shouldn't be one like that. So it's hard to say, but 
I guess I'll say agree. I mean, because you could also say that free markets, you're going to have like an owner of a company and those below him are going to be workers. So um, it's almost like that's just it, it, incidental. The For companies, there is going to be someone on top and, you know, someone on bottom, someone giving orders, someone taking orders. So I don't know. That's a weird question. Weird test so far. Astrology accurately explains many things. Uh, you cannot be moral without being religious. Disagree. Charity is better than social security as a means of helping the generally disadvantaged. Strongly agree. Some people are naturally unlucky. <laughs> what? <laughs> How is that politically relevant? Um, sure. It is important that my child's school instills religious values. Um, I, I, you know... That one's tough. I mean, schools should teach everything. Everything. So I believe that it's important that a child's school teaches about religion, but I don't necessarily think it's important to instill re religious values. But they should learn about it, and they should have the option of deciding what they want to believe in and what type of morality they want to subjugate themselves to. I missed one. Um, disagree then. Finally, a look at sex. Sex outside marriage is usually immoral. Nah, strongly disagree. A same-sex couple in a stable, loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. Agree with that. Pornography depicting consenting adults should be legal for the adult population. I strongly agree. <laughs> Not because I'm a porn addict, but because I believe in freedom of the internet. And you should be able to browse what you want. It comes down to your rights and liberties and your personal choice to do what you want with your life. What goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. Well, no shit. No one can feel naturally homosexual. Um, I guess I don't know. I'm not a homosexual. I don't know what... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no. These days, openness about sex has gone too far. Um, that one's tough. I mean, if you look at, like, at Hollywood and just pop culture in general, it's becoming, like, ris so risque almost. And I don't know if that is a positive uh, model to instill to our children, to the young generation. I mean, um, I'll agree with that. All right, let's see where I stand. All right, what is this? If we recognize that this is essentially an economic line, it's fine as far as that goes. We can show, for example, Stalin, Mao Zedong, and Pol Pot with her commitment to a totally controlled economy on the hard left. Socialists like Gandhi and Mugabe would occupy a less extremist left disposition, Margaret, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it looks like they have a scale here. Authoritarian right, authoritarian left, libertarian right, libertarian left. So both an economic dimension and social dimension are important factors for a proper political analysis. Or analysis. And yeah, analysis. By adding the social dimension, you can show that Stalin was an authoritarian leftist, i.e. the state is more important than the individual, and that Gandhi, believing the supreme value of each individual, is a liberal leftist, while the former involves a state-imposed arbitrary collectivism in the extreme top left. On the extreme bottom left is voluntary collectivism at a regional level, with no state involved. Hundreds of such anarchist communities existed in Spain during the Civil War period. I'm going to skip some of this. So it looks like here's where it shows them, basically. Stalin... Hitler, eh, I would have Hitler over here, but Thatcher, Friedman, all right. So where is Piper? Ooh. Piper 
looks like he is almost in the center. Libertarian, definitely libertarian side though. Center right about. Interesting. A word about neocons and neolibs. U.S. neocons with their commitment to high military spending and the global assertion of national values tend to be more author authoritarian than hard right. By contrast, neolibs opposed to such moral leadership and more especially the ensuing demands on the taxpayer belong to a further right but less authoritarian region. Um, I don't know about neolibs um, being opposed to tax taxes on people they like taxes and they say only taxing the rich but if you tax corporations you are taxing the consumers because those taxes get transferred onto the consumers people think like when you're taxing a corporation you're taxing a business no you are taxing all the workers that work there and you are taxing all of the consumers that are going to buy those products so I don't really agree with this assessment, but okay, this is kind of, I guess this is me. I mean, I would probably have myself, if I had to pick, maybe like right here, maybe right here. I mean, I'm not that far right, but I'm, I don't know if I'm that close to the center. I mean, I am, but some of those questions were kind of interesting. So, all right, that took longer than I thought, and I might be taking another test from a different website, see how things go, but there we go. There we go. I will put the link to the test in the description so you can check it out yourself if you want to see where you are. And I'm done.